What is going on, everybody? Happy Friday. Uh, Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through tonight, Friday slate. Just to touch on a few things from last night, I'm I'm very okay with, with having been wrong. On, it's very strange when you see these rotations in the NBA sometimes. I, I really do think Portland was was literally tanking that game. I don't understand it because they came out and they, they, they played so hard and they did all this stuff at the beginning. The coach literally made made moves to to take anyone who was positive on the court off the court at any at all times. So for for Shaden Sharp to play less minutes, for Kevin Knox not to play, or until the last you know until this garbage time, for all these guys who were getting minutes not getting minutes all of a sudden because of this, it's just bizarre when you lose when you take out your oh we'll get rid of the whole team, but all the guys we have in our regular rotation don't get to play either. This was a weird a weird day, weird situation. We're gonna have to keep an eye on it going forward. I would make the same move with Shaden Sharp I did yesterday again but it was frustrating a little bit to see him play 20 minutes and he easily could have played 32 he's projected to play 31 i believe um anyway so a little little little, little frustrating not not my great night um and i took some weird shots on kevin knox which obviously didn't work out but uh but i'm ready to get back after it sheets talk a little bit i know you did well we, we we watched it on we watched it live um talk a little bit about your night and then we'll jump into today yeah i mean once again just as far as you know announcements and stuff you know we 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 go uh, at six o'clock or so. We always do the uh, the live stream before the, or usually at least before the before the slate starts. And I really try my best, at least before I have to really go to like literally build my lineups. You know, I and I felt a little uncomfortable. Whatever, but I was I was talking through it just after Bobby left. I I talked through my last build of the big one, and I said, "Oh, if I if I could do this, I could do this." And then I built it, and then I said, "I guess I can show it to you." And I flashed it for like ten seconds, right. <laughs> And, and, and so, so if you guys want to learn how to play, I mean, you should really come to those live, to those six o'clock sessions, because you see the process actually develop, especially, especially me. Bobby sometimes has to leave because he, he doesn't use the technology the same as I do. So he needs a little more time to like manually, you know, do his stuff. So he has to, you know, listen, it's more, more important, more important than he wins that he, that he shows you what to do, honestly. But um, so he's got to go take care of that. But if I, if I have like, like 15 minutes or whatever, I'll show you exactly what I do and hope you guys will learn from that. And then when we did the, uh, the live stuff later, it was a lot of fun to kind of, uh, to kind of go through it. And we're going to be doing that once a week, the, the live sweat uh, where we're aiming for Wednesdays. And the reason why we're going to do Wednesdays is because we could double that with kind of like a last minute golf, you know, lineup build or something. Mm -hmm. So we could show you like some golf process and also kind of, you know, tilt our, our lineups or, or root for our lineups, depending on, on, on how, on how we did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's very, very pure. I mean, we could show everybody for the, you know, we, we went through this like so many different times last night, but, but we'll, we'll show, we'll show anyway. Um, hold on a minute. The, uh, where is the, not the fantasy points. We, we, what I, what I, what I want, right. That's, we got to sort by now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, yeah, I actually ended up 60th. Yeah, so hold on. I mean, I, I, I'm not even sharing my screen, right? So that would be, yeah, that would be nice. That would, that, would, that would be nice, actually. You can share. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this was the line of it. It was just very, very pure. You know, I took I took the I, – I, I got rid of Keon Johnson, and I used the three other Portland guys I liked, and we, we went over this. You know, Sharp, Reddish, and Little were the three guys. I ran that back with Sabonis, which is really easy. And then, and then what happened is I had an Embiid lineup, um with like a bunch of other stuff and then i got this idea that i wanted to turn the utah game into kind of a stack so what i had to do is I had to sacrifice the the Embiid, and i replaced so i was able to get uh, a stack of clarkson tucker and kessler ran back with shea and um and you know fortunately that got to overtime to make it comfortable but i might have might have cashed anyway yeah, um, I, yeah, I think I think you might have anyway. It would have been it would have been it would have been definitely a sweat. We, we weren't expecting Shaden Sharp to have negative points in the second half. That, that is true. That is true. <laughs> so. But you know what? It's like you know, Sabonis is fourteen percent. Shea was eighteen percent. Clarkson was sixteen percent. And and you know that's that's really all you need in in, in a big buy-in, you know, to mm -hmm. to to get different. So, um, I was I was happy with the way it turned out. Um, you know, you needed, I mean, you didn't need that much actually. Oh, petty theft, you know. You know, God bless him. First, second, and fourth. In the yeah, when he hits, he hits big. Tell yes, you that. he does. He won't and, see his name up there for a couple of weeks. He's probably losing a fortune, but then he'll hit like five, five of the top six spots or something. You know. Yeah, and 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 okay. So for those of you that were, this is this was kind of a really sharp kick by Bobby, unknowingly, not unknowingly. So when I was doing my 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 builds, I was showing you what I was doing with Saberson, and 
I mentioned, okay, now one of the things that's bad about Saberson sometimes, this is this is in my voice, is that is that sometimes it doesn't really get the correlation between players, right? Like I'm like I'm looking at my 50 lineups that I'm building here, and I'm getting like 15 of them with like Harden and B together. And I know Saberson's supposed to know what they're doing, but I'm just not doing it. So I'm just gonna X out all lineups with Embiid and Harden. And I say the 50, and then Bobby interrupts it. You know, normally that's not, you know, you're you're, you're right about that. But in this particular slate, the way it's going to pan out, I wouldn't mind having some Embiid and Harden, right? I'm like, okay. So I went back and put a couple in, and you fast forward four hours later, and the winner, Petty Theft, had them both in the winning lineup. Right, right. 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 <laughs> the catch for 150,000. So um, I wish I would have practiced what I preached on that one. That would have that would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh and and you know well, it could have been different if, if you know if Embiid got to play not Embiid if if Luca got to play the whole uh, yeah the whole fourth quarter but you know overall I, I was listen I was never in, in in the position to to like win huge but I was I was always in, it had a sweat and I was happy more important I was happy with my build so right um, and that's the important thing I mean you know, really, in the, I know it sounds like a, a thing it, it obviously it's important you know you want to win but right. it is really important to 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 like your build and have it make some sense and you you definitely yeah. gave yourself a chance with that one. Um, all right, so let's jump into today. It's going to be uh, kind of a like a strange slate because you have very, very suspect value early in the day. Now, we're going to have that happen quite a bit, but I just want to point it out that, that it's, it's going to be really, really, there's going to be a couple of really chalky guys of, as of right now that either won't be chalky or, or anything later on um, because we'll hear about tons of other value, which I don't think is going to happen today as much, knock on wood. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're going to have to pl- make some really uncomfortable plays at high ownership or decide whether to fade these guys. And we'll get into that game because it's going to be the night one again um, with the Houston side of things. With that said, let's jump right into uh, to New York and Washington Island starting off game. Sheets, what do you think about this one? Um, Like you were alluding to, I mean, a lot of the value is going to come from that, uh, that late, that, that, uh, that Houston game. Um not really getting too much for the Washington, New York. I mean, I'm not, not getting anything on the value side as far as spend ups. I guess Randall 9,800 would be my favorite. If I had to listen to be a, had a tier thing, we had to pick one fantasy guy from each team. I guess Randall would be my top play, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I have better plays than that, but that, that would be my only, my, my top play. I'm probably not going to get to anything though at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I I don't see a lot in this game that I that I love. I like the matchup, like for New York. I think this is a spot where, you know, you could talk me into taking a shot on a low owned RJ Barrett or a Julius Randle. Um, I don't think either of them will have any ownership. It's just tricky with Josh Hart there now as well. Um, but I I think that if I had to pick one Barrett or Randle, I would I, I could consider taking a shot on. And then I just don't feel excited about anything on the other side. Assuming that Bradley Beal plays, which I'm going to assume he does. Um, I think that I would consider like a little bit of him or Kyle Kuzma, but look, it's just, you know, just reaching for, for, for random plays here. I don't feel anything special. It's not back in New York. No, Chris stops revenge in that sense. Um, but, uh, but Chris stops, I mean, there are, there are worse plays, just none of these guys really stand out. So also buys us an extra half hour. So I'm okay with skipping the first game in most of my lineups today. Yep. All right, let's move over. And by the way, I want to throw out, by the way, a little fan I'll, I'll talk a little bit about fan at the very end, just because I, I do like that they're starting to add some some better tournaments out there. And uh, they, they tend to do that. You know what? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll play again. I haven't played fan like a long They've time. They've got like a, the, two, the 222 tonight with 100K for Ooh. first place. Oh, I'm doing that. Okay. So I think that'll be kind of a fun one. Um, all right, we move over to Miami, Milwaukee. And people, oh, that's what that's that's who, that you have. Now. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That you have the other one first. We'll talk t- talk about Cleveland, Atlanta, then, because I was ready for the other one. Well, we'll say this. Uh, I'll throw this. I'll throw this narrative out there just just for fun, if you want. Um, so Trey Young has really been fighting with the uh, with the coach, um, with McMillan, uh, and McMillan is now is now gone. Um, I don't know what, exactly what that means, but but. Uh, you want to make the case that maybe Trey will be happier now. I, I don't, I don't know what that means either. Um, but I do have him rated kind of okay, but I have the two Cleveland guys rated a little bit higher, uh, but the two guys are actually, I don't have Mitchell rated up there. I, I, I really have Garland Mobley and even Jared Allen, but on a back to back, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to do this, but, but listen, I don't, 
the Cleveland games are usually games where you, you don't really want to play, you know, guys in fantasy. Um, on the other, you, you sometimes, yeah, not, not you, sometimes you want to play the Cleveland guy, but not, not, not. right. No, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm looking at the, at the, at the tray play. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess Garland is the guy that I like the most at the price. I mean, 7,700, even Mo, what's Mobley doing? Dropping 800. Off of, even, yeah, he was 8,100 and he did very well. And he's brought dropping to 73. That seems a little, I don't know, that seems a little fishy. Maybe, maybe I should go back to these guys. Yeah, I'm on board with. I, I'm curious to see who who ends up playing for Cleveland tonight. Um, I, I do just want to keep always keep an eye out. But the truth is that they're they're like in the middle. They're tied with the Nets right now for the four seed. I'm um, sorry, no, sorry. They're, they're two games ahead of the Nets for the four seed right now. Um, they they definitely would like to stay on that upper echelon, upper upper tier of the Eastern Conference. So they're not gonna like sit everybody on these back to backs. But there is a chance you might see some of these guys take a take a little take a little break. So that's that's gonna dictate it probably what I do here. I, I want to just point out that Chetty Osmond didn't get there in any kind of a way last night, but he played a lot of minutes. Um, and he played 26. His minutes are back up. I, I would consider guys like this again, especially if you told me, um, you like, you, the, the, it's going to probably, they'll rely on Rubio being out again. And I think Rubio was going to just play one of the back to back. My guess is he does play tonight and maybe somebody else did. So I'm just going to have to wait to see on Cleveland, but it is obviously a desirable matchup. As of right now, I would agree with you that Garland, Mobley, Jared Allen, actually, I think all three of those guys are fine plays. Um, but Garland and Mobley being my, my, two, my two favorites at the moment. I like what you're saying about the trade narrative. I think these things are really important. If we think we're they're going to let him go and play free, the truth is he let everyone down. He he was the one who said he could play off ball more, and he just couldn't. He's a terrible, been a terrible off ball player. He's, he's in, in true life, probably been as detrimental to his team this year as just about anybody in the NBA. Um, but you get rid of the coach and the ball's back in your hands again. I, I have a feeling that Trey could try to do something here. And even though this is a tough defensive team and they play slower, Atlanta at home can dictate their own pace. And, and as their, their defense is really with the, with the wings. Are they going to put a Coro on Trey Young? I actually think that you could consider Trey Young, DeJounte and Bogdanovich all in this game. And, um, I, I probably will have some mixes of that. Did you get to, you, you didn't get to any of the other pieces? Like the, I was just looking at it. Like, I know they don't project great, but Capella is like, you know, they're, they're going to have him out there. You could say he's got a higher minute ceiling. Um, you might even see some Akongu out there for, I'm, I'm actually just, I want to see a starting lineup for this game. That's probably when the slate will start for me. Cause I'm kind of skipping that first game. Um, but I, I do think that this is going to be an interesting one. And I, I love the, I love the games after the coaches get fired because usually you do see something change. I just don't know what that thing's going to be. And the most logical right now would be the Trey Young piece that you mentioned. All right. What, what, do, you, what, what do you have for this next game? Because I must have something. It's too speculative for me to like, okay, I get it. Right. The, the Kevin Love thing. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you're talking about, I'm talking about Milwaukee, right? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that that with with Giannis out, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna get over that. I just thought it was gonna. I thought you were gonna start off with the the value looking. Kevin Love, we're automatically just penciling him in as as one of the better value plays in the day on on, on Saberson, and it, it's a very speculative role that he's gonna have. We don't know if he's gonna play ten or fifteen minutes a game, you know. Um, but I, but getting over to Milwaukee, um, I'm gonna do some digging, but I think they're gonna lift a little bit of the minutes up on on Middleton. I don't think it's gonna be enough to where I'm gonna play him. Um, I do think ho- the, the price might get people on holiday and you, we don't love to play point guards against Miami in general. So it's a little weird. And is it really possible we could have a game without Giannis where we don't have a ton of interest? Well, this, is what I'm, this, this is what's confusing to me. Yeah. I mean, you'd expect to, I get like, you know, the usual, like seven, you play seven Milwaukee's right. And then whatever, but, but I don't, I'm not getting anybody. I, I may, maybe, I mean, you have to play, something's got to show up. Right. I mean, it, it is a little weird. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. They, they did a good job pricing people. And you, you look, it's not the same thing as having Giannis, obviously, but they do have Bobby Portis back, um, off, which is going to you know take some of the offensive load. Jay Crowder will make his debut tonight. Um, so all, if all of these guys go, you just have a lot of guys, you know, and it's and these are not the Portland guys who were 3K or whatever without their, their all their usage guys. These are guys are all more expensive. We have the minutes. You know, I don't think that they're going to let Milton play more than 28 minutes, certainly. Um, so it's just kind of a tricky game, a tricky one to, 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 to pick out on their side. And then also they have a bad matchup against Miami. Um, 
I don't know what to do with them, Sheets. I, I'm a little lost this on this myself. Uh, I honestly think that Bobby Portis, if I just felt like he was going to have free run, I don't know if he's going to, though. So you've got minutes probable, probably restrictions with him. Maybe by the end of the day, we like Brooke Lopez. But as of right now, I'm having a hard time getting to anything on the Bucks side. I think yeah. that by the end of the day, somebody is going to be 40% off. And Bucks. I have no idea who it's going to be. That's that's my yeah, that's my. Um, I mean, they just, if, if they just ha I mean, somebody just has to be. With, with I'll tell Giannis. you what it would be. It would be the middle. The Middleton is no has no longer has a minutes restriction, or Middleton's going to play thirty two minutes tonight. That would probably be the guy, because look, I mean, look at these. Look, look who's going to play the minutes from their team. You have Middleton projected at twenty six minutes. You have Bobby Portis coming back from the injury projected at twenty six. Brook Lopez doesn't play more than thirty. Um, Joe Ingles plays twenty. You're going to get a bunch out of Holiday. But, I mean, Grace Nowen's 4,800. That's not that much fun. Javon Carter, 4,300. They still have Ingles in there. Like, I, I don't know what to, to do. I really don't. Um, so, as of right now, I'm, I'm, I'm not that interested yet. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes open about it because it, it does seem like they're, they're maybe being a little bit underprojected. Uh, what do you think about the Miami side? Well, and meanwhile, you brought it up, right? So, so what, what, what is – what's uh... – What's the story with Kevin Love here? Uh, he, they, he asked that they love him in Cleveland and he loved them. So they did it. They did the nice, the nice man's gesture. And they said, we'll let you go because he, he wasn't happy with his role because they have the double big lineups and everything. They don't, not, don't really need him as much. So he ended up, uh, he wanted to go to Miami and and now he's in Miami. They, and, and they will use him in Miami. I think he's going to have some good minutes for this team, but like right now he's being projected to play 20 minutes by on Saberson's. Saberson, I think it's an extremely aggressive number. Like I agree with that. I play ten or fifteen minutes in the first game, maybe not even that much. Um, however, if they want to, if they want to let him go, he certainly like. I mean, if he plays twenty minutes. He's probably going to be be good for it. You know what I mean? I, I actually think he's being under projected at twenty minutes. Based, you know, he should he should be a little better than point per minute in this situation. Um, but nothing else for me really that, that stands out. And, that, and even that one, I would consider speculative, and I'll be much more interested if he's low, if he's lower owned later in the day, than if he's going to be twenty five percent owned. I'm probably just going to going to say no, too risky. Yeah, show up at six. We'll have a better idea by then about this game. Yeah, a little, a little tricky. Um, uh, also, that you know, you, Miami's. You know, are they going to? They, if they do anything weird like start him, it's going to obviously make him the most popular player. All right. Uh, next up, what do we have? Uh, you've got. I'm trying to look at your screen. Oh, Bob. Brooklyn, Brooklyn against Chicago. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to start this one off? Yeah. I mean, a pretty, you know, pretty pedestrian game here. I mean, you have uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. I guess is the best play I have for Brooklyn, and he's rated for me like 15th down on the list. So, not that big of a deal. I would, I would, I'd be interested if there was like someone good on Chicago, but. I mean, DeRozan, I suppose, listen, I suppose 7,800, fair enough, you know, so, okay, so let's try that. Let, let's try DeRozan from Chicago, and I'll, I, I, I definitely prefer him over Levine at 8,400. Um, so I'll, I'll try DeRozan, and then Dinwiddie, I guess, on the other side, and let me see if there's any value here. Um, uh, no, not really. So, listen, this could be, well, you know what? I didn't realize this. I, 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 I didn't know this, actually. I think Cameron Johnson's on Brooklyn. Um, yep. <laughs> try that maybe a little bit. So, so that's that's another that's another piece you could try. You could try. So, Dinwiddie, Johnson, DeRozan, just can't get quite enough juice to put a stack together here. I don't think. Um, but those are those are the guys I like. Yeah, this is weird. Um, uh, uh, Cam Johnson's fine, like, but they have so many wings. Like, yeah. I just don't know how to how to feel like like good about any of them um they, they play a lot of guys i think dinwiddie is probably my favorite and i think that that's probably what what i would consider doing here I, I don't i don't have a whole lot of love for the rest of this um i think cam thomas is a really good tournament play every night i just you want to talk about i i don't mean fantasy points per minute do you want to know what this guy's doing point per minute wise yeah i know i said it's know. crazy he played 21 minutes 21 minutes he had 19 points the other day I mean, he's averaging like like 0. 0.8 points per per minute, like real points, not fantasy points. 
He's a usage monster. I mean, like, just, he is. Just, I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's nuts if you go through his his game log, even in the games he doesn't play much, and then all those games where he scored forty, obviously he had scored yeah. his units. Like, um, I, I kind of was hoping they'd give him a little bit more of a role. And I think maybe after the All Star break, maybe they will. Maybe they'll find a way to squeeze him in. Keep an eye out for Brooklyn Mick changing up starting lineups and stuff. They're still going to make a playoff push with this team. Um, and then I, you know, at the at the prices, it's. Did you say anything about DeRozan? I did. I like him as my favorite on Chicago. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a, a it's a pretty low price, but I mean the production hasn't been there as much lately. But I wouldn't mind either he or Levine. Uh, honestly, I think Vooch is even in more in the mix, but I like him the least. Eh, it's probably not at that price. I think Levine or, or DeRozan are, are totally reasonable, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all, pretty much what I have. I, I think Caruso is a large field type of thing, but. Levine or DeRozan certainly makes sense to me. So far, nothing that we've gone gone through that I feel like, oh, you need to have these guys tonight, you know? Um, all right, next up, Charlotte, Minnesota? Yeah, I mean, I think Anthony Edwards is the best play uh, today um, uh, in general. Uh, there's another guy I'd like to, we'll get to him, but I think Anthony Edwards is the best play. Uh, this is an incredible environment, uh, so I definitely like that. Lamella at eleven thousand. I mean, it it seems kind of expensive, but you know, it's parts of me wants to just pay the twenty thousand one hundred. You know, put both those guys in and 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 then value it up the rest. It's kind of like obscene to pay eleven thousand for Lamelo until he puts up seventy freaking fantasy points. You know, in a in a rocket ship pace game. You know, right. uh, so uh, I don't see too much else though um actually that's not true okay so um rudy gobert at 7200 is showing up kyle anderson assuming his back spasms have been been taken care of he's showing up jade mcdaniels is showing up so yeah this could be this could be kind of interesting you know you put you put a couple of these guys in there i mean you know i don't want to think i don't want to think i think i don't i don't think i want to spend the money on both edwards and gobert but I might spend the money on Kyle Anderson. Fifty one hundred is very really reasonable. Now I do see him really really high owned to start off the day, so we gotta kind of keep an eye on that. Yeah. But he's been he's been playing really well, and fifty one hundred is very that's that's why he's owned. I guess it's, it's a very reasonable price tag. So listen, yeah. the two hundred two hundred million point total spreads close enough. You're gonna probably want to you know projection models are gonna show up for this game. You're probably gonna want to play this game. We haven't really gotten to a good game yet, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's about it. LaMelo, Edwards, uh, Kyle Anderson, Gobert. That's what I'm at. What about Terry Rozier? I like Terry Rozier. Uh, Terry, what about Terry Rozier, huh? I, I like him a lot here. Um, so I, I have Rozier as like a guy who I, I'll definitely be on the run back because I agree with what you said. And um, I think you play one of Anderson or Gobert in most of your lineups as of right now. I think it's a really good way to go. Um, kind of take away from each other, but maybe we can assume Gobert's groin is finally okay and he gets to play against this team and he might have 25 rebounds. Yeah. Um, he had a little break uh, at the all-star break, so I can certainly get behind that. I actually think that it's Rozier is the only guy I can quite, get, you know, talk myself into on Charlotte. I think PJ Washington's a little bit of a reach right now. And just keep in mind that we're supposed to have Kelly Oubre back, so it even makes Rozier a little less interesting. I still like Rozier enough in the matchup to run back with – with Ant and either Gobert or Anderson. Um, and then I think that you could even mix Mike Conley into the mix because I think that's reasonable. The storm is just getting going. We have a massive storm coming in this weekend. Massive. Oh, really? Yeah, we've had it'll be the third one of the year so far. Wow. Um, it had to, they had to cancel all the roads and the ski to the ski stuff. It's gonna be blowing 70 miles an hour later. It's nuts. Um, all right. Anyway, I can just hear it going though. It's gonna gonna be howling. All right. Hopefully my internet will stay. stay you want to get that? You you're gonna you want to get down to Jaden McDaniels, Terrain Prince? I think both those guys are. I think Jaden McDaniels would be my preferred guy, and they're both they're both fine. But I think we're starting to talk about like a few too many guys in this game, and I don't know if we can play that many. I actually think that Nas Reed is just as is just as worth it on a speculative uh, as a speculative play. All right, let's move over. Let's move to the to the to the game that I the other game that other people are going to be playing the most. Boy, everybody on uh, Houston is going to look good. Um, we don't have any – there's no Jalen Green. Obviously, there's been no Kevin, no Kevin Porter Jr. for a little while now. 
Um, Jabari should play tonight, obviously, after like he was out for a little while before. Um, I think that like Josh Christopher is like he's going to be like 100 percent owned and it's hard not to like him off the bat, like just because he should get the role and like all of that. But they haven't really just like let let him like go off on the range. They do. They do like him. They took him or, you know, he was a first round pick last year. Tari East in their first round pick this year is probably I probably like just as much as Christopher, to be honest, right now. Um, but I would like to play one of these guards, whether it's Ty Ty Washington or Josh Christopher, because they, they do need somebody to play point guard. Um, <laughs> at least some sort of a guard. Deshaun Tate, I guess you could argue, would be the right guy, too. You could throw him into the mix. The problem is they just never play him like more than 24 minutes. So I'm going to, I'm having a hard time a little bit with the Houston thing. As of right now, I have it rated Eason, Christopher, and then Shangun as the guys who I'll play the most of. Um, but I think they're all good plays. And I do think Shangun is an elite, a, a, like an elite, elite play tonight. So I uh, don't want to bury that, but, but yeah, all of them definitely I have some interest, but Christopher Eason and Shangun followed by Tate would be my, my highest levels of interest. How about you? What about what about Golden State? Well, I I, I don't want to I don't know who's gonna play. <laughs> um, I know that you know we expect that, that earlier Clay was sitting out the back to backs. They started playing these guys more. Maybe they just let it fly. Maybe they do. And and you did get a discount on all of them, so you run it back with you know some combination of Kaminga with either Poole, Clay, Draymond. All of them seem completely fine to me tonight, and this makes sense as a game stack. Anthony Lamb is gonna show up as a value a little bit. Not overly excited about it, but I don't mind it. Um, I, I do my, Michael Green on a back-to-back. I don't know if I want to go there. So I mostly it's going to be Kaminga. I think Poole would be my favorite of the guards, but I have no problem if you want to say Clay over Poole. And then Draymond would be my next favorite play with maybe a piece or two of DiVincenzo. I, I do think it's a good game stack, so I, I don't mind if you want to get, you know, pl- play three guys from each side here. I think that's actually a really viable route to go tonight. Yeah, after Edwards, I have Sangoon as like my next f- favorite play on the slate. Um, and you just touched on that. Uh, very, you know, pretty elite play. And this is also a day, unlike most others, where you're not even giving up too much by taking a center spot. You know what I mean? It's not, I, I haven't come across like an amazing center play yet. I mean, it's Gobert, but who cares? You know what I mean? I, I think, I think Sangoon's outscoring Gobert. You know what I mean? Right. I, I don't know. Uh, so uh, I like Sangoon. I like Christopher, like you said, and I like Eason. Those are my three favorites from Houston. Um, I think you can play all three of them together uh, pretty handily, actually. And I think that the pool is just a very natural run back for, for Golden State. And I think this is this could be a game that, you know, th- th- as usual with these Houston games, they could be shit shows. And, and they, may, maybe Clay gets like 40 real life points or something like that in a game like this. You know, I don't know. I think it's um, possible. Yeah. You know, so I, I think I think this game is a perfectly good game stack. Uh Kuminga, uh sure. Yep. Yeah. So I could I could I could treat this one like like I did the Utah game last night. Just just pile pile a bunch of these dudes on there and just hope hope it hope it goes overtime. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those. Yeah, um, and you could have some late swapping abilities because some teams are on back to backs down here, and and you, you you know that might be valuable to have those wrong. Yeah, and there's a nice little the nice little gap there, right? You have these seven to eight o'clock games and then then nothing until you know these last three um and you do and you do have some choices in these last three as well so um, yeah and yeah. i have no problem if anybody wants to just ride it out until these last ones because there is a lot a lot going i mean on. these have been really crap games you know the first the first four i mean look the charlotte game is a good game right but yeah but but, but that's like and that that is a game you're gonna have to deal with from your early slate so i i can't push that one back i gotta i gotta play something yeah, yeah, um, I gotta do that. but you could, I think you'd certainly make a case for. Listen, we we talked about this at length uh, before. I mean, I'm not going to intentionally x guys out if they show up, they show up. But I, I could certainly make a case for the first four games on my sheet, not playing anybody except. I mean, like if this Milwaukee thing, like if this plays out a certain way, you know, I, I don't know who's going to start. I don't know who's going whatever. Like you said, if they say Middleton's on no no minutes limit and he's starting, you know probably have to play it right i mean uh so uh we'll 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 see how that goes but but like you said uh good late swapping opportunity really good game stack and you know probably no defense will be played all of which are you know all of which are saying the same thing you probably want to play guys in this game right 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 um and and and, uh all right so let's let's move on and next you have i'm guessing okc right yeah so 
Back to back for OKC. This is one of the most interesting teams. What they're going to do the second half of the year. Back to back after after, after overtime. And back to back after overtime on the road in Utah, and then go back on the road to Phoenix. Good luck. <laughs> are are they even going to play any of their guys? <laughs> like they, they they still are fringe playoff contenders, absolutely. But like. I don't know. I think there's a lot of speculation as to where they decide to drop. Cause if they can drop down to like the, one of the five worst odds, they, they do get a boost for that. Um, also, they're not going to beat necessarily win a playoff round. It's going to be hard for them to pass the Warriors, Jazz, Pelicans and Timberwolves or, or somehow get in over those teams. So I am curious to see what they're going to do on this back to back. There's, there's nothing that I've heard. There's no, there's nobody on the injured list or anything like that. It's just, something we have to keep an eye out for uh, as the day goes on, because I, I really think that there's a chance that some of these guys sit um, at, as it stands right now. And, and I'm looking at the line. Let me just double check the Vegas line. Yeah, I'll, I'll lay the six and something a half. Is weird. Something weird is with this line though. They're, they're, well, they're definitely assuming that everybody plays for OKC. Yeah. I'm sort of shocked that on a back-to-back -back after an overtime, yeah. how is Phoenix only a six and a half point favorite? Yeah. I'm going to try that. And, and then, and, you know, if you try that plus minus six and a half, at worst, you have like kind of an okay bet. I mean, and then if God forbid Shea gets ruled out, you basically get like five points of line equity. Yeah, know? I think you've got a good bet anyway. I mean, I know that's what I'm saying. Been, been feisty, but like, come on, like the Phoenix is the. I mean, I know they don't have Durant right now, but this is the team that's the second favorite to win the title. Seems like they should be getting a little bit more against this. They team. also don't have. I mean, they have Paul and Booker, and they have Aiden. I mean, like they got players. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jesus. Um. Anybody speaking, on the, speaking, speaking of which, anybody on the Phoenix side for you though? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Speaking okay. of which, I, I I got no problem playing these guys like 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 Booker and Aiden. I, I think they're very reasonable plays. I agree. You know, and, and uh, like you said, I mean, who's to say they blow them out? I mean, it's all like you said, it's only six and a half points. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean. Let me tell you this. This would, this would not be the first time, by the way, if you go back, that Shea smashes like on a back to back because he's done that before. Yeah, that's true. He, and now it's listen. This is not exactly the matchup, but yeah, not exactly the matchup that you want. And like and you talk about the pace down. I mean, like going from Utah to 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 the Phoenix team, it's like it's really not the best. Okay, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've, I've I just seem to recall giving this speech before about why I wasn't going to play Shea, and he ended up getting another sixty or something. You know, I'm just just throwing it out there. But I, I'll, I'll you know what I'll I'll go Anthony Edwards straight up over Shea. You know, even with the twelve hundred discount, if you want to know the truth. Um, so I but I do like both those guys, Booker and Eight. I think that they're very reasonable. Um, as far as I don't really see any value aside from those two, but uh, yeah, I'll take a shot. Yeah, I mean, look, if anybody wants to play Tory Craig and I, or Lou Dort, I have no problem with it. Lou Dort had a really nice game last night. Um, I, I don't know what I, – I just – I feel weird about the back-to-back, -back, especially Lou Dort after coming off the injury. He's being projected for 30 minutes. I don't think they're going to necessarily do that with him unless the game is, like, super close. So I, I'm on the side of bet Phoenix and uh, play some Devin Booker. That's, that's, that's my take on this game. Um, I like that. You could get that nice, like little bill. She's like the kind of bill we like, you know, the the the, the yeah. Booker and and then the Shangun with the with the Anthony Edwards. Like that, those are the right kind of spends, you know, that feel good tonight. To me. Yeah. Rather than the the eleven K Lamelo, which is not a bad play. Just I like these other ones. Speaking of uh, of back to back uh, overtimes, um, oh, that wasn't overtime. Sacramento not going overtime. They were in Portland last night. Uh, and they were now, home, and now they are. Yeah, they were they went from they were at home in Sacramento last night. Oh, and they just went down to LA. Oh, not a big deal. Okay. Um. Ah, uh, okay. I, I guess we have to look at Sabonis <laughs> again. What, what's that? That's how I feel about this game. No, I mean Sabonis. <laughs> again, at ninety nine hundred, looks uh looks pretty reasonable. Um. Uh, there's not a lot of spend ups here, right? So, so I think he is reasonable. I'm not getting any of these Clippers though. I'm not getting. To Paul George, although you'd like to think that Paul George at a at eight two in this type of environment, um, I don't even know what this environment means anymore. I, I, uh, but Sacramento's still going to push the pace, and you get Paul George at eighty two hundred. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's worth a stab here. It's he's, 
He's not showing up as that highly projected, so he's probably going to be. He's got his boy, his boy Russ back in the mix with him. Ten percent owned. Okay, so so Westbrook's is he's going to play Westbrook? You think? Supposed to play, yeah. He's also being. I think his minutes projection is a little like his like projected play thirty minutes. I think that's a little exaggerated. I don't think he's doing. I don't think his first game he's going to play that much. But I do think it's really good for Paul George to have him. Yeah, but is it is this one of those situations where you all three of these guys on the court you can't play any of them? No, because Paul like like Paul I mean, Paul George had his best ever season statistically and in real life with with Westbrook. People say this about Westbrook a lot. That all this guy wants to do is dish the ball. Like I mean, right, that's true. He, he's not like out there going. Everybody acts like he's out there trying to score because when he does, it doesn't look good. You know, a lot of the time. Right. But he he's just very happy to to give to give the assist over to those guys. Yeah, it's some of takes away some of the upside for them maybe from an assist standpoint. But I don't think they're gonna let him take over the offense as much as the, maybe he's being projected to right now. So I like the idea of, of Paul George. And I think, I think he and Kawhi because of perception will be low on when I think actually both of those guys are really strong plays in an unbelievably great matchup against Sacramento and Sacramento is priced just so I don't quite want to play anybody, to be honest with you. Um, it is going to be interesting to see what the Clippers try to do. They want to play these five out lineups um, as the playoff come around, which is weird because they got Plumley. But that's what they're going to use Westbrook, and I think I think they're going to use him with the, like the Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Morris, Norman Powell lineups, or Eric Gordon. They just have a lot of guys in their bench. That's the only thing. Like there's, Eric Gordon's going to play minutes. Norman Powell's going to play minutes. Terrence Mann's going to play minutes. Bones Highland's going to play minutes. Nick Batum or or Covington could easily play minutes. They're very deep. Um, I still think Paul George is a good play. That's where I'm at. Yeah. So it looks as though it's a. You know, three and a half game slate, maybe. You know, like uh, yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte, Minnesota, Houston, Golden State, and then, and then you know what? And then some pieces. You know, I think that's that's the way you uh, you approach this. I mean, looks there there are pieces you could find. You know, maybe in that Cleveland game. You know, if you feel like it, there's maybe. I still think that there's going to be something to play in the Milwaukee. I just don't know what it is. If you want to yeah. play like a one, you want to play like a one off with with the Rosen for Chicago. You know, that's that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that Char- and we talked about Charlotte, Minnesota. We talked about Houston, Golden State. And if you want to take a couple of stabs at, the, at one of those Phoenix guys, maybe I guess that works. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think it's a pre- I think it's a it's a reasonable slate. Yeah, I, I have my my priorities as being uh, I like the Levine, one of Levine or DeRozan in this matchup. Awesome. I like Anthony Edwards. I like the Gobert or Anderson, but I think you can. I mean, you can even play them together. I just think that I don't want to get everybody from Minnesota. Um, I like Rozier on the other side. I like Josh Christopher. Um, Eason, Shangun, Booker. I'm gonna have to. I'll, I'll, I'll post my core plays. I'm gonna do a little more digging before I do, and I'm also gonna post all my early builds and all that stuff. I did want to touch on FanDuel quickly before we get out of here as to some of the things that are different. Um, because I, as I said, I'm gonna start trying to cover that a little bit more and more. Um, but the I think Kaminga stands out as being an even stronger play over there. Josh Christopher may be a little less ne- less necessary. Um, but still certainly viable. Um, DiVincenzo, I think because of his mid-ranging price and, and his skill set, it makes some sense. I like Kyle Anderson over there even better than I do on DK. Um, Shangun, I like just as much or better on, on FanDuel. Uh, Draymond, I like a little better on FanDuel. Uh, Dinwiddie and Middleton are the other two that I had circled that I like a little bit better on FanDuel today. And uh uh, other than that, it actually is is playing fairly similar between uh, both sides as of this moment. Anyway, um, should be a fun one, guys. Be live with you at 6 Eastern. And uh, Sheets, anything else? No, that'll do it. All right. Good luck, everybody. And we'll uh, hopefully take something down tonight. Take it Sounds easy. Good.